On Christmas Eve, the National Salvation Front meets with General Stankulescu in Bucharest to decide the fate of the Ceausescus. They fear the Ceausescus may remain a rallying point for counter-revolutionary forces. In a stormy three-hour meeting, President-to-be, Ion Iliescu, argues for a civil trial weeks later, while General Stankulescu argues for an immediate military trial. He eventually gets his way. He has his own ideas about what sort of justice the Ceausescus deserve. On Christmas Day, five helicopters land at Togoviste barracks. General Stankulescu assembles all the personnel who are to conduct the military trial, including Captain Boero and his troopers. Stankulescu and Boero meet with Colonel Kemenich to be shown round the barracks. The general points to a wall along one side. This, he tells them, is where the execution will take place. Kemenich is shocked as he realizes that the verdict is a foregone conclusion. Boero finally understands the significance of his mission as Stankulesco orders him to lead the firing squad. The Ceausescus are taken out of the armored car they have been hidden in. They've heard the helicopters and assume they'll be flown to safety. Instead, they are escorted to the schoolroom. Inside, a grim piece of theater is played out. The Ceausescus are given a medical examination to see if they are healthy enough to stand trial. Nikolai's blood pressure is very high. Eleanor refuses to be examined but keeps hold of the insulin delivered earlier that morning for her husband. Captain Boero picks three soldiers to stand alongside him in the firing squad. He cannot afford to choose anyone who might have second thoughts about executing the people who were until three days ago the supreme rulers of Romania. At one o'clock, the court is convened. It's the last throw of the dice for the Ceausescus, but they aren't playing the game. Nikolai refuses to recognize the legitimacy of the court and treats the proceedings with contempt. The principal charges laid before them are genocide in Timisoara and theft of the nation's assets whilst forcing the people to live in poverty. Eleanor is outraged when the court strips her of all her academic titles. When asked to explain why he fled the Central Committee building, Ceausescu looks pointedly at the assembled witnesses. He begins to realize the devious role Stankulescu has played in their downfall. The court orders a recess to consider its verdict. The lives of Romania's leaders hang in the balance. Captain Buero's firing squad waits nervously to see if they'll be needed. The judgment on the Ceausescu's 25 years in power takes only 55 minutes. For the first time, it dawns on them that they may not survive. In a room thick with treachery, the Ceausescus are touchingly loyal to each other, their partnership unbreakable to the bitter end. Yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no,
Jakoś. They are to be shot immediately, despite Romanian law of the time forbidding execution within 10 days of a death sentence. Captain Guerrero has been told to wait for Stanculescu's death sentence. But when Ceausescu emerges, Buero's feelings get the better of him. Oh! Inspection of the walls reveals over a hundred rounds are fired at the elderly couple. The firing squad has been told not to aim for Nikolai's face, so they can both verify his death and use it as propaganda. Eleanor is granted no such dignity. On Christmas night, the TV revolution delivers its gruesome climax. Viewers can see the graphic images of the Ceausescu's dead bodies. <laughs> Romanians all around the country cautiously celebrate. Many are still in shock. <laughs> The Ceausescu's are buried in unmarked graves in the Gentia Cemetery in Bucharest. Nikolai is the only head of state to lose his life during the purge of communism from Eastern Europe. 